Let me do it. Do it. Da -da -da -da. Okay, here we go. Mummy and Finley picking garlic. Make sure you pick the best, juiciest ones. Look at that one. And make sure you're wary of those lookalikes. Look, oh, there's two lookalikes hiding amongst the garlic there. Mm, smell it. Today we are going to be making wild garlic pesto. So the first thing to do is to collect some wild garlic. I've got my experts doing it, helping me today. If you're not sure how to uh, positively identify wild garlic uh, or the type of wild garlic that you're particularly after, make sure you check out our video on wild garlic and uh, have a look at that one first. Then skip back over to this one where we're going to be making wild garlic pesto. Let's get into it. Who's that I see down there? Hello. You coming up to the camp? Come on, Daddy, come on, my boy. As you can see, the cabin is still underway. Starting to get all this kickboard on here now. Really making progress. I think that's about three weeks away from being finished. Right, here's where we are. So, we've just been collecting loads of garlic. A nice big healthy bowl full. This is probably actually more than I'm actually going to need, just to give you an idea of my hand against this bowl. But yeah, this is going to be absolutely great. So some of the key ingredients you're going to need, we're just going to go take a look at right now. But first, I'm going to get the fire going. Garlic. some kind of oil. You will also need some kind of nuts. Doesn't have to be pine nuts. I've gone just for a big pack of mixed nuts. Remember, this is gonna be the woodland version. And of course, the star of the show, the wild garlic. <gasps> da -da -da -da! Amazing. Now we've got our three key, key ingredients. So obviously at home, you would stick everything in a blender, whiz it together, et voila, pretty much. Now, we're gonna need a carrier or something we can put it into. So we're going to roll with the low cost, easy to get hold of option of a glass jam jar. Now, in the interest of being hygienic, as we can do in the woods, a top tip would be to boil the kettle, make sure you've got some nice red hot water, unscrew the lid, fill up the jar to the brim with the boiling water and make sure we tip some around the outside edge. Uh, make sure we do inside the jam jar lid itself. That should be nice and hygienic when we go to close that up and then it, pop it away in the fridge. So to go ahead and make this, you can simply use a lovely pestle and mortar like this, bearing in mind they're quite weighty and that's something you have to put in your rucksack and take all the way down to the woods. Unless you want to make this at home in your kitchen, in which case you can use one of these and a blender and this will be a, a lot more of a refined product. But we're not going to use that today. We're going to go with a good old fashioned our stainless steel container and the Mark 1 stick. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to chamfer over the edges. Okay. I'm going to chamfer over these edges and make this into a sort of a domed shape. So you notice what I'm doing is using the belly of the blade and just pushing on the spine, pushing off these edges. I'm in no rush. Take my time. As soon as I've taken this first piece off, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and knock the next edge off, okay? That next edge up here. Once I've taken that off, I'm then going to knock that next edge off again. And just keep going until you've domed this whole thing over. So this is going to be your pounding or macerating stick, okay? And this is going to be used to mash and grind everything up in the bowl. Quite simple, really. That should do. Okay, I've probably got way too much garlic here, so let's start off with about half that amount. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to rip, crush, or cut these in, in pieces. So I'm just gonna go and head and rip it. Ripping gives me more cellular damage, releases more flavor than cutting. Ask any chef, they'll tell you. So go ahead and really get, get your hands into this. 
Make sure you've washed your hands beforehand, obviously. Those are that saying, guys. Okay, and you're gonna go ahead and get your, uh, your mashing stick and start mashing down all this garlic and really breaking it up. Really, really do it. Really do it. Come on then, Finley, let me help you. Push, 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 push. Oh, no, back in. Oh, back in, good boy. Come on then. I'm gonna help mummy. Oh, oh, he's doing it. Oh, look. Oh, oh do you want to use a big stick? Okay, and then we're gonna pour in some oil. Watch your fingers. In goes the oil. A nice liberal glug to get the party started. Okay. Gonna help me, Finley? Can push, you help push, me? Push. Mix, mix, mix. Oh. Oh. Okay, and of course our key ingredient, the nuts. Probably goes without saying guys, if you've got a nut allergy, <laughs> don't be doing this. We liberally pour these in. There we go. So I've gone for pretty much half a pack of nuts. And you should be able to see now that gorgeous. Let's see if we can lift this up and catch some of the colour. See what's going on in here. So we're going to crush all these nuts up. Our garlic's breaking down nicely. And we've got a good glug of oil in there. We're going to keep going with the oil as our carrier. Dirty. 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 That's it. Let you do it. Oh. As I said, guys, this is a little bit rough and ready. This method. Okay. And then at this point, if you want to put some salt in there, that's it. Stand back, mummy. You can go ahead and put a little bit of salt in there and season it up. Just be patient, obviously this isn't a household blender, so your final mix, your final finish is gonna be somewhat uh, a bit rougher. Personally speaking, I'm quite a big fan of uh, uh, food that is a little bit, how should we put it, rustique. And uh, I think this would be an absolutely amazing addition to any sort of uh, campfire, pasta dish, uh, or anything you wanna do in the house, in fact. So of course, once we've done that, that's all very good and well. The next thing we need to think about is how to pop it into a jar to preserve it. So we are going to go ahead, take off, let's uh, right, our jar. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get our kettle. It's a lovely evening here up at main camp. You make sure it is good boiling water and you're going to fill your jar all the way to the top. And if you really want to go all out, you can let it overflow. And then you're going to make sure you've boiled all the sides as well and make sure you get that lid. Give it a good soaking. Cool. So, that's now gonna be killing off any nasties potentially that could be building up inside the jar. Careful, Finley Pop, that's very warm. We'll put this one back on the fire. Now, where's our stick or our knife? That's it. And just before we're ready to go ahead and use this, I'm gonna take this out. Daddy do it. Are you copying what Daddy's up to today? This is a proud dad moment. We've noticed a lot of this behavior recently. So whatever I'm up to in the house or down in the woodland, he, he then acts out. No. Or copies or replicates. So yeah, proud dad moment. Are they your nuts for your pesto? Okay, so I'm going to try and grip the sides of this thing. There we go, that worked pretty well. Now we've got a nice clean jar. The next thing to do is to bring our garlic pesto mix in. There we are, look. And begin to tip. Just look at that gorgeous colour in there. That really is lovely. We're going to tip that into our jar or spoon it in if you have a spoon. If you don't have a spoon, it's going to be your knife or it's going to be probably the macerating stick. 
I just really wish you could smell this. It's absolutely incredible, beautiful. Um, when you're cooking and working with fresh ingredients like this, it really is lovely. And again, this just harps back to that thing about being able to forage your own food and finding your own wild ingredients in the undergrowth. For me, it's just incredible. It's that whole mind and body thing coming together. You know, you're getting the best of those fresh ingredients grown out here in the world. And you're also getting that, that kind of mental benefit of, uh, of having that um, empowerment that comes with being able to find your own food. It's, for me, it's amazing. And it's something that um, has definitely helped me on my little journey. So the plan now is to go ahead and spoon this stuff into the jar. Let's see if I can uh, get some of this and pop it in there. I'm sure when you're doing this at home, you will be 20 times more careful and probably go to greater lengths to really chop up your leaves than I have here. But like I said, I'm a kind of a rough and ready, big flavor kind of person. Uh, and I really enjoy this sort of stuff. It's as much about the process for many people actually, as it is the end result. And that's something that I've always kind of stood by. Any of these little processes really are a lot of fun. So you've got these lovely nuts infused with the oil and the wild garlic there and a pinch of salt going in. We'll pack that in nice and tight. And just as you think you can't get any more in there, you probably can, so have a go. Make sure you fill it right to the very top. Daddy. That's it. There's a few nuts there that could have been squashed a bit better. And now we're going to put a lid on. That's it. Daddy, open the bed. Daddy, open the bed. Open it, please. See, it's closed, Finn. That's your wild garlic. Pesto. Mum did the diet. Mummy diet. Can you try it, Daddy? Daddy, try it. Mummy, try it. Oh, mm, that's really nice. Mini diet. Mini try it now. Hang on, let's get Don't act surprised. <laughs> Go on then. Okay, guys, thanks for watching today. Um, if you've liked what you saw, make sure you hit the like button. Please, please subscribe and tell all of your friends.